So what is up guys, it is Nisho here and we're back here with some more Legendary Duelists um, talks and dissections, this time about the Legendary Fisherman deck slash Mako Tsunami cards and slash or support. Um, so starting off, we got four cards for a Legendary Fisherman um, theme. I guess it's not an archetype per se, but I consider it an archetype just because it's using Legendary Fisherman um, and like there's multiple versions of him. But yeah, so we got two monsters, a spell, and a trap card, just like in Amazonas. Um, the two monsters are both like remasters of old monsters. So Citadel Whale being a remake of like Fortress Whale, I think it was. It was like a ritual monster, and it was like one of the most expensive ritual monsters in the game. So to have another version of it that's actually playable, I think that's pretty nice. Next one is Legendary Fisherman 2, which is another, uh, which is a remaster of the Legendary Fisherman with a kind of better effect, but, um, and more attack. And it just has the same versatility and use as the original Legendary Fisherman and adds more and becomes a Legendary Fisherman while it's on the field. So, yeah. And then these two spawn trap cards, we'll get into that a little later. So starting off with a Citadel Whale, if it's in your hand or graveyard, you tribute two water monsters and special summon it um, from your hand or graveyard. So just, uh, it's something that I do think can actually trigger Mermails and Atlantean effects, just cause um, unlike the water true king where it, uh, it says, and if you do, so that means that um, the destruction and the um, special summoning happened at the same time. So it technically wasn't a cost for the true king, the water true king. Um, Citadel Whale just says, tribute to monsters and the special summon this card. It has a semicolon, so uh, that means that it has a cost, which means you would trigger your Atlantean and slash or Mermail monsters for this guy. So that automatically makes him pretty good. Uh, and that is only usable once per turn, unfortunately. But he summons himself from Graveyard, so that's definitely not a bad uh, trade off. So second off is that when he's special summoned, you get to set one C stealth attack directly from your deck. And C stealth attack is the trap card that we are going to go into a little later. Um, and then uh, once per turn, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets one water monster you control and no other cards, you can negate the activation if you do destroy it. No cost to negating, just if your opponent activates something that targets a water monster, just negate for free once per turn. Um, it's not the best type of negating, but at least it's something. And uh, C Stealth Attack is actually a pretty solid card. You know, let's just jump around and go to C Stealth Attack now. So when C Stealth Attack is activated, you can activate one Yumi from your hand or graveyard. So Yumi is a field spell. Um, the one that you would want to use if you're using it in a Legendary Fisherman deck is a, a Legendary Ocean. But um, if you're using it in any other deck. I don't think you would even care about using Yumi as a card. So um, it's definitely not something that you're gonna use all the time, like in every deck that you played in, but it's something that, you know, for a legendary freshman, it works pretty well. So once per turn, you can banish a water monster you control until the end phase. And then this turn, face up spell and trap cards you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effect. So it does have its little own protection, um, so, you know, if, you're, if your opponent tries to Twin Twister you or um, Tornado Dragon you or something, um, you can just banish your Water Monster and, uh, you know, it stays on the field. But, you know, like, why does it have a, pr a protection effect if, you know, its uh, utter effect isn't something worth saving for? And uh, it kind of is. So, at the start of the damage step, if your Water Monster battles, whose uh, who's original level is 5 or higher, so it has to be... A monster whose original level is five or higher. So any of the legendary fisherman monsters or citadel whale, which you definitely will have on the field if, if you uh, summoned it or if you searched it through um, said it if you search see stealth attack through citadel whale, then you'll definitely have both of those on the field at the same time. So um, you when they both battle, your opponent's monster gets destroyed. So um, at the start of the damage step, it's kind of like a ally justice uh, cataster. So. You battle, 
both get destroyed. It doesn't matter if they attack you or you attack them. If this card is on the field, your opponent's monster gets destroyed at the start of the damage step. Unfortunately, there's no replay battle um, when you're attacking, but that also makes it better for your opponent, just in case, uh, well, it makes it worse for your opponent. But, uh, you know, well, it would make it better in the case where if you attacked and then they had like no other monsters on board and then you would have been able to attack again if there was replay, that would have been better. But um, unfortunately, that is not the case. Still, though, um, a card that can pretty much uh, get over problem monsters um, and then protect itself in the same process. Um, the monster that you banish is only banished for the turn and you can banish any water monster. It doesn't have to be level five or higher to protect sea stealth attack. So um, it's, it's pretty decent. It's, it's not bad. Um, and the fact that it's searchable from the deck only. It would have been nice if, C if Citadel well got it from the grave as well. But um, having it only from the deck uh, definitely doesn't hurt either. So next off, we have the Legendary Fisherman 2, where his uh, name becomes Legendary Fisherman while it's in the field of graveyard. Now, although he is a level 522 hitter, the, as I said earlier, the, the Yumi that you would use is a Legendary Ocean. And so what Yumi does is that um, while it's uh, on the field, uh, well, while it's face up on the field, obviously, uh, all water monsters you control that are in your hand and on your field, their levels are decreased by one. And um, both Legendary Fisherman 1 and 2, both um, both are level 5 water monsters. So they would be normal summonable from the hand if you have a Legendary Ocean on the field. That's why I think it's pretty cool that, um, you know, like, uh, it synergizes like that. And um, see, Stealth Attack says, you know, uh, water monsters whose original level is 5 or higher. So they make sure um, to synergize well with the Legendary Fisherman. So while Yumi is on the field, this card is unaffected by opponent's monster effects. Um, so he's going to be a 24 hitter because Yumi is going to make him gain 200 attack, no matter which version of Yumi you're using, unless it's a trap card, um, forgotten in the deep. But that's only Yumi while it's on the field, so I don't even think you're going to use that. It's not searchable by Sea Stealth Attack. But yeah, uh, so... It becomes unaffected by your opponent's monster effects. A 24 hitter who's unaffected by monster effects and uh, is pretty strong. That uh, like a normal summonable 24 hitter, that's that's not a bad. Um, and uh, if his face up card leaves the field, um, it's a show of a battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect while its owner controls it. That's a little situational. Uh, you can add a level seven water. Uh, monster from your deck to your hand so it has to be level seven specifically uh so you know it's not level seven or lower it's just a level seven so he can't search another copy of himself he can't float unfortunately but he does add your citadel whale and citadel whale does um special summon itself if you control multiple water monsters so it's okay but you know like legendary fisherman would need like I don't know. It feels it feels weird. Like you need a lot more waters on board to make this like synergize well because you know you wouldn't be able to use Citadel well like right off the bat just because it's level seven. Well, it'll be level six technically because of a legendary ocean, but that still doesn't make it any better. And lastly, we have the quick play spell card Rage of Karyu Shin. I hope I said that right. I don't even think this card is in the TCG actually. Let, let me look this up. Yeah, it's a it's a OCG exclusive exclusive card, and uh, we we have it on the artwork of uh, this ball card right here, which is pretty funny. They couldn't just release this card uh, for some reason. It's also a level five water monster, so with a legendary ocean on the um, on the board, it will be a normal summonable two thousand hitter, which although it's a normal summon, it's a normal monster, so it's not really a big deal. But um, this. Quick Play Spell card does have a pretty decent effect. So while Yumi is on the field, you target monster your opponent controls up to the number of water monsters you control whose original levels are five or higher. And if you do, destroy them. And if you do, uh, the zones that they were in cannot be used until the end of their next turn. You can only activate one of Rage of Karyu Shin per turn. So it pre pretty much, it's, it's just a... Uh, 
a way to get rid of problem monsters. It's a quick play spell card, so you know you don't have to waste like battle traps or anything like like mirror forces. You don't have to wait till a certain point. Just activate it whenever you want. The only problem is one is that it only targets monsters. This would have been way better if it targeted um, spell and trap cards as well. Second off, Yumi has to be on the field. Although if you're playing this deck, you're probably going to be playing a legendary ocean anyway. But ultimately. Um, this card is something that I think you would stray away from just because Yumi won't always be on the field. You won't always have level five or higher monsters. And, um, although it does like get, um, stop your opponent from using the zones that those monsters were in, it still doesn't really help the deck as a whole do anything, you know, like it doesn't help, uh, make the deck any better. It just hinders your opponent a slight bit for only a turn and, um, honestly, as a whole, this Legendary Fisherman support isn't really, um, I don't really think you can make a good deck out of this stuff. Um, Citadel well by itself, you can probably play in like Mermails, but all this other Legendary Fisherman stuff, um, the theme as a whole doesn't really do as well as, uh, some of the other themes from the first Yu-Gi-Oh, like Dark Magician, uh, Blue Eyes, Buster Blader even, you know, like all those, all those have actual decks, and even Blacklisted Soldier, would probably be a better option than this just because blacklist soldier has um more searchers and you know can go through his deck faster this uh is probably just a fun casual anime deck that you shouldn't really take too seriously um i, I did talk about the legendary fisherman 3 you can probably try like uh fitting this into some deck that like a water-based deck that you've already made but uh as they are they don't really uh, the Legendary Fisherman as a theme doesn't do too well by itself. You can try Dynamist, I, I guess, because Sea Stealth Attack does actually, like, with a Legendary Ocean and in Dynamist, this might not be too bad. Um, but, again, there's no real way to search out the Legendary Fisherman, and uh, it doesn't have enough support to be its own playable deck. But, you know, it's still cool that uh, Konami's still giving it a little love and, you know, just moving on to lore a little bit. But, yeah, I guess that's all for now. Um, I did talk about the Legendary Fisherman 3 in my initial Legendary Duelist video. So, if you haven't seen that, go check it out and see why I think that the Legendary Fisherman 3 is the only real saving grace of the Legendary Fisherman theme in general. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next archetype on... Legendary Duelist Dissected.